Hi everyone, I'm going to talk a bit about creative reuse as well, since that is today's topic, but uh, that can also mean something different, I think, when you are working at a cultural history museum, as compared to the art museums we've listened to so far. Uh, the Nordic Museum looks like this, it's in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, we have a large collection of objects uh, and other material uh, looking at Swedish and Nordic history for the last 500 years. Altogether there are about 1.5 million artifacts. Um, we think around 6 million photographs, uh, although no one has counted them all. Um, and in addition to uh, that type of collecting there are also uh, a library with several multiple volumes, uh, a research library on ethnology, cultural history and so on, and uh, a publishing house that has been publishing uh, research and more popular uh, uh, books for the last 100 to 150 years. We make uh, four different kinds of material available online in various uh, stages of open access. Uh, and uh, you will recognize most of this, of course, collections metadata, uh, collections images, when we have them, publications, when we can put them online. And we are looking more and more at uh, publishing archival material as well not only the registered register or metadata of the archival material, but actually adding lots of scanned documents and making them available for reuse. This is a sketch of how our material is di distributed. Most of it, I, I'm kind of jealous when I see the percentages of uh, other institutions like Cleveland. Um, we, of our photos, for instance, I think we are past 2% digitized now, but it's uh, still a long way to go. Uh, so most of it is not digitized. You have to come here to Stockholm, to Sweden, and uh, explore the archive yourself. Uh, some of it is digitized, and most of those records are published online uh, at digitaltmuseum.org.se and are thus available to look at. Our licensing policies are moving towards open access but not uh, like everything at the same time which means that part of what is available online is also available for reuse and i think that's a common situation for lots of museums and you could if those of you that have uh, been following this webinar series could see kind of aggregated stats being presented by Douglas McCarthy last time, I think. Um, so we are in that situation. We have been able to make some stuff available uh, all the way to uh, a free license for open reuse, but not everything. So basically we are uh, trying to move things upwards in this um, uh, scale of, culture, of, of uh, Creative Commons licenses. Uh, and once you reach the top, uh, the, the, the dark green ones, uh, a work can be considered a free cultural work, which is approved for open access or uh, open reuse. Um, I think one thing is worth mentioning here, which also is kind of a different situation than uh, some of the other presenters previously, uh, not only today, but also in, in the previous webinars. Uh, in our collections at the Nordic Museum, uh, in addition to uh, public domain works where we can decide until the, the EU law changes and everyone is required to, now we can decide to share a public domain work without putting our own license on the digitized copy. Um, but we also have 
a lot of works in our collections where it's actually the Nordic Museum that is the copyright holder, since the museum for a long time has been collecting uh, both as donations and as uh, uh, and uh, uh, accession in other ways. Uh, we have collected a large collection of uh, cultural historical photographs, where lots of them are still uh, copyrighted, um, at least depending on how you view Swedish copyright laws. Um, so there are lots of copyrighted material where the economic rights are owned by the Nordic Museum, but we still want to share them. Uh, so that's kind of a different situation than sharing public domain works, because these works are not in the public domain. They are owned by the Nordic Museum, and then we decide to share them using Creative Commons licenses. So, how can we help people reuse uh, whatever we manage to make available in an open license? To begin with, this is the situation. Some people just, and, and this is basically the same thing that Meretta said in her talk. Some people visit our building, uh, um, several hundred thousands every year, but those will always be a minority of Swedish population and uh, not in the least a minority of the world population. So we try to cast a wider net with our, our uh, content. We make it available on Digitalt Museum, which is a shared uh, online collection for Swedish and Norwegian museums, which is uh, included in the collections management system we use. Uh, and that has a wider reach than the amount number of physical visitors. We make material available on Wikimedia Commons, uh, which is bigger yet. And of course, the rest of the internet or the rest of the world is a lot greater. Free access metadata and images uh, are made available on Digital Museum. So these are the images where we still have not been able to clear the rights to make them truly open access. These are shared with copyright, with unknown licenses where we can't determine the, the copyright holder. We, we believe that an image is in copyright, but we don't know who owns the copyright, for instance. Um, so those cannot be shared on Wikimedia Commons, for instance, but we can still display them until uh, something else is decided. Um, images in our own collections where we partly own economic rights, but they are shared with the original photographer, for instance. Those we can make available, but we cannot share them uh, in, uh, share them secondarily. Um, free cultural works where it's possible to license them with CC BY or, uh, or uh, more free than that. Those we can also make available between Wikimedia Commons. Um, of the publications that have been published at the museum, uh, we are looking through those and determining which ones are uh, have uh, joined the public domain after their authors have been dead for 70 years. So those publications we are now making available on Wikimedia Commons and Wikisource as well. This is a lot of early research on Swedish cultural history, for instance, not only Swedish, but other Nordic countries and Northern Europe. Um, so we can make the entire articles with transcriptions available. We can get help from the Wikimedia community to proofread our OCR uh, character, our uh, automated OCR, for instance. And not in the least, at the bottom we have open knowledge. What can happen with the source materials and with the research library at the museum? Um, when using the Wikipedia. The information that is uh, entered into Wikipedia is done so with the CC by SA license, which means that it's shared freely uh, using open access and other people can re reuse the content. Um, I'm going to give you two examples. One of a an image and show what happens when we make images available online, and then a more in-depth 
example on uh, how we try to encourage new articles being written on Wikipedia. Um, this is an image in the Nordic Museum uh, photographic archive and it's not even our image to start with, it's a copy from the library of the Swedish parliament but they haven't put it online. So the repro copy in the Nordic Museum archive has been digitized and is available online. Um, and it's old enough so that it's in, pub in the public domain. And it's a photo from a women's suffrage um, march in Gothenburg in 1918, uh, which is shortly before women's suffrage was uh, approved in Sweden. Um, this image has been available on Wikimedia Commons for a couple of years now, I think since 2011. Um, and what happens when you put something with historical value on Wikimedia Commons? It gets used. Uh, this this uh, list is actually, I think, two years old now. So there might be even more uses since then. Um, and once something is used widely on Wikipedia, that means that everyone else looking for images will find it and reuse it. Uh, so here are just some examples on how that image ends up on, in other places. On a website about democracy turning 100 years old in Sweden. It's the banner image, so it's like shown on every page on that website. Uh, when a university writes a press release, they use this image. Uh, when a, an author writes a book about the year 1918, the image appears on the cover. Uh, when one of the major newspapers writes a debate um, about uh, the International Women's Day, the picture appears. Use, writing a photo, Wikipedia Commons. So not 100% correct, but at least people get to see the content. Uh, so th those are just some examples of how one image that made it all the way to Wikimedia Commons and into Wikipedia, because I think that's where people find it, not on Commons itself, how that image gets widely reused in multiple different contexts, which of course is really nice. But we can also kind of encourage and facilitate this ourselves. This photo is from the museum archive and library where uh, high school students doing their 12th year in Swedish school are writing what is called a diploma project before they leave uh, the high school and move on to working or uh, university studies. They need to make one uh, diploma project and this is a kind of uh, a work where they get to try out what it's like to write a research essay for the university. And we invite them to the museum, to the library and to the archive uh, of the Nordic Museum. And together we figure out how can they write this and publish whatever they write on Swedish language Wikipedia. Um, we look for the cross section here something, a subject or uh, a theme that is mainly either entirely or mostly missing on Swedish language Wikipedia. So there's a like a gap to fill. There is re research material available in the Nordic Museum in our library. There might be archive material, there might be an exhibition, but most importantly it's interesting to the student. Uh, because that's when they actually want to write about it, and that's when they will do a good job. So if we find that sweet spot in the middle, it usually turns out really well. Um, the students visit us multiple times, six, uh, five or six times from September to March during their last year in high school. Uh, so they return to the library, they get to know the space, they find their favorite spots, um, 
and go through these uh, stages to select first broadly and then more specifically what they want to uh, write about. And using our library, they find the relevant research and they are instructed by us and by uh, Wikimedia Sweden uh, volunteers and staff. They get to know how to edit on Wikipedia, how to analyze existing articles, look who did uh, write which parts of these and so on. Um, they get an introduction to Creative Commons licenses on how to um, uh, find photos that are suitable to use. They write the articles and then they publish and celebrate. Um, we've been running this program in a small scale for three years. We are doing the fourth round uh, at this moment. They are coming to visit us next week again um, to look at uh, archive photos. Um, and the results so far in, during these three years have been six participating schools with more than 50 students altogether. Uh, they've added and expanded a bunch of articles on Swedish language Wikipedia, um, uploaded several images from not only from our collections, but from other museum or archive collections as well. We don't force them to choose Nordic museum material. And they've written about 355,000 words, oh no, sorry, no, 355,000 uh, letters, including uh, source uh, references and uh, those kind of things um, on Swedish language Wikipedia. These articles uh, have been visited over more than 200,000 times, uh, which is not what these students are used to when they're writing essays. Usually it's their teacher, maybe their parents, or some uh, other student is forced to read it as well. But what they write in this project is actually used. It's on the internet, it's on Wikipedia. Everyone uses Wikipedia, whether they admit it or not. So these articles are actually being used. And that's something also that encourages these students to do a good job. Um, so for, for us, not being uh, an art museum, we do have some art in the collections, but for us, reuse is not so much about the artistic or creative reuse in that sense, but reusing our materials or the materials in our collections rather, reusing that to create new knowledge. Um, and not only in the scholarly sense, but in a, in a wider participatory sense, uh, where uh, people on multiple levels of, uh, in, uh, or stages in their life can use the material to learn something and also share that on to other people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aaron. That's, that was really interesting. And I think it must have been amazing for the students to um, experience this kind of outreach with what they create. Um, I have um, a question in the chat. Um, do you extend the invitation to schools from like far away, like not in Stockholm, but for example, in other parts of Sweden? So far, the, the schools have been from different places in Sweden. Uh, we haven't been able to fund the travel, but uh, if the school can afford to send students to uh, uh, to uh, Stockholm for some of these visits, uh, two or three of them, the rest of them we have done online. Uh, so we have had participating schools from uh, some other uh, cities in Sweden, as not, not as far north as Kiruna, but that would be uh, wonderful, of course. Um, I think it was really interesting that you mentioned that um, because of your collections being different than, for example, um, art museums, um, you also create other things with reuse. And I think it was really interesting um, that you mentioned that you create new knowledge together with those students. Um, do you also see um, that you help those students establish new competencies in using, um, so in um, navigating the web, for example, or using online sources? Uh, definitely. I think uh we can the part we play is that we help them 
understand Wikipedia in particular. But I think some things you learn while figuring out how Wikipedia works can be applied to lots of other publications as well. Although like Wikipedia is, is extreme in the sense that so many and so anonymous people can edit the content. Um, so some of the lessons learned are, are very specific to Wikipedia, but I think in an overall sense, they, um, they hopefully get the feeling that no, uh, like no encyclopedic entry or no finished educational or, or research text is purely neutral. There's always someone who has been trying to, uh, Put it together and they have various limitations or access to various sources and uh, uh, they get to try that journey themselves by finding the research trying to put it together and trying to uh, um, trying to express that in a short and concise way for anyone else to read 